When patients come to the emergency department, they expect a level of care higher than they themselves could provide. However, this is sometimes not the case. From 2012 to 2015, alarm fatigue was the most pressing safety hazard according to the Emergency Care Research Institute. Imagine being a nurse. You work long shifts and receive few breaks. Every couple of minutes, an alarm goes off. This beep could mean a patient's IV bag is done, there's a kink in the line, or they are going into complete cardiac arrest. But when you are at the nursing station, there is no way to differentiate between these different kinds of beeps. This leads nurses to ignore these monotonous sounds. This is called alarm fatigue. It is not uncommon for nurses to silence annoying alarms. This was seen in the 2010 case of a 6-year-old male in a Massachusetts hospital who died in the intensive care unit due to the negligence of the attending nurse. Despite the fast heart rate and unstable breathing of the patient, the nurse tuned out the overwhelming sound of the many alarms, resulting in his death. Given the urgent need for accurate monitoring systems, researchers from the University of California are looking into ways to better identify life-threatening changes in the patient's condition. Alarm fatigue is a hazard in the ER. In one study done by the University of California, 88% of alarms turned out to be false alarms. I think that this is a huge problem that can heavily influence the quality of a patient's care. Luckily, researchers have seen the catastrophic consequences of alarm fatigue and have decided to look into technology that can differentiate the different kinds of alarms with higher precision. This is called alarm gating. This system was created to pick out the cardiac arrests among the many other alarms. By personalizing the alarm settings of individual patients, the alarm gating system computes the signal quality index to quantify the ECG quality and rejects alarms with a low SQI. In other words, the system will record signals above a certain threshold and reject alarms going off below this threshold. In the future, I would like to go into nursing and I hope that by then hospitals will have systems in place to filter out the nuisance alarms. In one study, it was shown that nurses respond to an average of seven false alarms over the course of one hour. To what extent is this technology useful? I believe that anything that will decrease false alarms will improve patient care by preventing these false readings. The hospitals will avoid unnecessary cardiac arrests and the resulting lawsuits. If I was a nurse, I would think that responding to that many nuisance alarms would create some distrust between the alarms and myself. However, I believe that when you decide to become a nurse, it is your responsibility to take care of your patients. If that means checking on them whenever an alarm goes off, it is still your job to make sure they are okay. I would rather walk 10 meters to my patient to make sure they aren't arresting than assume they are alright and suffer a malpractice suit and the death of my patient. Thank you for watching this video. If you would like to see sources or some extra information, click the description box down below.